So this video addresses the differences between a testamentary trust and an inter vivos trust. I'm Paul Rabelais. I'm an estate planning attorney. I help people throughout South Louisiana make sure all their legal affairs are in order. And then, you know, when somebody passes away, we want to help help them make sure that things go smooth and the way they're supposed to go without all the government interference. People get confused sometimes about the testamentary trust and the inter vivos trust, so I thought I'd break it down for you here for a couple of minutes. Um, first, let me get the lingo straight. I called it a testamentary trust. Some people call it testamentary trust. I called, I said the words inter vivos trust. Some people call it inter vivos trust. Uh, lay people call it a living trust. So that's just some lingo. Let's get right to it. I'm gonna give you an example that should help you really understand you know, the differences here. So let me use as an example, uh, a gentleman by the name of Jack. And Jack is married to Jill and Jack has two kids. And maybe it's the kids of both Jack and Jill or maybe it's just Jack's two children. It doesn't matter for purposes of our discussion. But Jack's you know, going through the estate planning process and he's thinking to himself, you know what? If I pass away, I want to work, make sure Jill's taken care of. I want my assets available to her. But when she dies, I want to make sure that those assets go to, go to my two kids. And so what Jack winds up with is he works with an attorney and winds up with a, among other things, a will with a testamentary trust. Testamentary trust is a trust the terms of which are inside someone's last will and testament, hence testamentary trust. So Jack's will probably says something like, I leave my estate to the Jack testamentary trust. I name my wife Jill as the income beneficiary for her lifetime. I name my two children as the principal beneficiaries. Um, I name Jill as the trustee of the Jack Testamentary Trust. And if Jill can't be the trustee, I name my two children as the successor co-trustees. And if, uh, if the income beneficiary, Jill, needs to use some of the principal for her health, education, maintenance, support, then I authorize the trustee to make distributions of principal to Jill for those reasons. So that's kind of common. It, it could say other things or could say different things, but all that is part of Jack's will. So that's what's called a, a Jack, uh, a testamentary trust that Jack created. Now, a few years later, after setting up the will with the testamentary trust, Jack passes away. Jill and the two children go to the lawyer's office. And after reading the will, they say, uh, you know what, Mr. or Ms. Attorney, we don't have to do any kind of probate or succession because my dad had a trust. Not so fast. Well, because it was a testamentary trust, um, the trust doesn't even exist until Jack dies and nothing is titled in the name of the trust when Jack dies, everything remained in Jack's name. So the probate, or in Louisiana, we call it a succession, is necessary to transfer the assets pursuant to Jack's will from Jack to Jack's testamentary trust. A testamentary trust never avoids probate. Um, so that's the testamentary trust aspect to this. Now let's look at the inter vivos aspect of this. There's going to be two parts to it. So let's say when Jack worked with the attorney, instead of creating a will with a testamentary trust, he created a separate standalone trust called the Jack Inter Vivos Trust, or maybe it was called the Jack Living Trust. And that trust said that um, that trust was um, effective dur during Jack's lifetime. It was revocable during Jack's lifetime, but when Jack died, it became irrevocable and Jill became the trustee. Jack's two kids, successor co-trustees, Jill income beneficiary for life, two kids principal beneficiaries, and if the trustee determines that Jill needs principal for her health, education, maintenance, and support, trustee's authorized to make those distributions. Same terms as Jack's testamentary trust, but it's just part of a separate standalone Jack inter vivos trust. 
it was set up during Jack's lifetime. And in his will, he said, when I die, I leave my estate to the Jack Living Trust or the Jack Intervivos Trust. Depends how official the attorney was who created this. And now, if no assets were transferred to the Jack Intervivos Trust during Jack's lifetime, then there's going to be a probate needed when Jack dies because he left everything in his name. Have to use the will, family goes through the probate, court supervises the transfer of assets from Jack's name to his Intervivos Trust. Now let's go through one other example. Let's say Jack sets up his Jack Intervivos Trust and he transfers title of his home, of his investments, of other assets, transfers title of those assets into the Jack Trust while Jack is alive. And when Jack dies, the assets are already there. Then Jill takes over as the trustee. She starts getting that income. When she dies, the principal goes to Jack's children and no probate is necessary when you have an inter vivos or living trust with assets transferred to it during what's called the settlor's lifetime. So under that scenario, when Jack died, there was nothing in his name that was frozen that the courts needed to supervise transferring to Jack's trust because assets were already in Jack's trust when he died. A lot of people prefer that situation because it's just simple. It's um, when, when Jack died, the family didn't even need to come into the attorney's office. They didn't need to go through a court proceeding, didn't need to incur the expense, delay, no attorney involvement. Uh, Jill just simply took over as the trustee of, of the Jack Intervivos Trust because Jack was the trustee while Jack was alive. So um, that should give you a good scenario of testamentary trust, never avoids probate. It's a trust, uh, the terms of which are inside somebody's last will and testament or an intervivos or intervivos or living trust, all the same thing. It's a standalone trust and either assets are transferred to it after someone dies because their will left assets to that standalone trust or someone transferred assets to that trust while they were alive and then named successor trustees to manage it after death um, without having to go through the court process. So hope that helps. All trusts are either testamentary trusts or inter vivos trusts. Um, and really important that you understand the um, aspects of it. If you want to find out a little bit more, you can go to my podcast called Estate Planning in Louisiana, where I made a separate podcast on these very issues. Feel free to check that out. I'm Paul Rabelais. Go take care of your business. Make sure you leave a legacy for those loved ones. It makes all the difference. Have a great day.